I decided to read romantic comedies for a week to cure my depression. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm doing one of another video where I focus on specifically one type of subgenre of romance for an entire week. Now this week of June, it was pretty busy for me. I had a lot of things that I needed to finish at work, which caused me to read a little bit less than I would normally typically read in like my other videos. Last week I did romantic fantasy and I think I read like 11 books for that one. And then the week before I did reading popular romance romances and I think I did nine for them but for this video I kept it a little bit short I only read seven books this week and they were all focusing on romantic comedy they are the light-hearted sweet romantic comedies that you would typically pick up for a beach read so hopefully this video will give you some recommendations and also clear up your TBR too as well because some of these books weren't my favorite. Okay, so the first book that I wanted to talk about is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. Now, this is a book that has been trending, I think, on Book Talk, and lots of people who are very popular here on BookTube are talking about this book too as well. It's trending on Kindle, and if I remember correctly, I think it got picked up by a real publisher, so you will see it distributed more in your bookstores. So this one is a friends to lovers romance. It involves our hero who is a star football player. He is extremely good looking and all the girls want to be with him and the media is very focused on him because of his really amazing talent. And then our heroine is kind of like the girl next door type of character. She is not that special, but she has been with him through all the hard times in his career and she thinks that he is really attractive and she likes him but she also feels that she is way under his league and that she is a punching above her weight if she were to ever try to pursue anything with her best friend. Meanwhile our hero is secretly harboring feelings for her too as well but he is afraid to admit to her because you know he doesn't want to ruin the relationship. He doesn't want to risk the friendship and so they both kind of just dance along the lines of being friends and then being something more. Now this book is a closed door romance which I have no qualms about like I don't really care but the problem with this book for me was that it was way too frustrating to see these two characters clearly in love with each other and it was like two POVs so you get to see like both of them just kind of like growing more and more frustrated. It was so slow burn that it definitely took away the enjoyment factor for me personally and I ended up only giving it a three out of five stars. It was an average read. Would I recommend you to still pick it up? Yes, if you're looking for a very slow burn sweet romance. All right, so the next book that I picked up is this other trending popular romance novel that everybody's talking about here on booktube as well and also on book talk. It is climbing the Amazon charts. I think it's like number two or number one in the time of filming this. It's this fabulous cover called Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Now this book and this author, I've seen this author around before but I haven't heard too much about it so it was kind of a surprise for me when I logged on to Amazon one day and I saw that it already had like 30,000 reviews and then when you go on Goodreads it has over like 75,000 reviews so then that means that it just kind of shot to popularity really quickly and I wanted to know what the hype was about. Now since the time of filming this my friends have read this book and we all collectively agreed that this book is so freaking cute. So this involves our heroine who has a twin sister who is definitely the opposite of her. So like the twin sister always gets herself into trouble. Like she does like a lot of weird things like take her sister's identity which is our main hero's identity, you know, like make fraudulent claims, you know, cause havoc wherever she goes and makes a lot of people really just despise her. So this doesn't really help our heroine in any sense especially when our heroine's kind of going into these small towns and then everybody's kind of giving her like the death glare because they all think that she is the reckless twin sister. So what happens is that our heroine is kind of like shunned from society basically but she manages to hold her ground and she stands up for herself and she basically tells everybody that she is someone different and that she is much nicer. Um, um, the one problem is now is that her twin sister gave birth to a daughter and then now she is the person who's trying to take care of the niece because her sister literally can't take care of her anymore and her sister is like run away like they don't even know where she went. So now our heroine has the responsibility of taking care of her niece 
while trying to navigate a new job while trying not to feel like she's falling behind in life because she is like in her I think later 20s and she doesn't really have a career for herself yet and while she's also trying to deal with like a very prickly character who is our hero who really put his foot in his mouth when he first met her and accused her of being like the evil manipulative twin sister that he thought she was. So this is kind of like a very slow burn romance again. It has a huge cast of characters and they all add their unique value to it. What I really liked about this book was how sweet and genuine our hero was. He claimed that he didn't want anything to do with her. He claimed that he didn't want to care about the niece. He claimed that he just doesn't want to do all these things but he would like subconsciously help her out. He would like give her things to make life a little bit easier for her because you know she's trying to work these jobs to support the niece now and he would just really just be there to support this family that he has really no connection to. It was so adorable and I just loved him so much. He definitely made this book really good and then of course our heroine too just kind of like being strong and standing her ground and trying to defend herself. It was fabulous but the one problem that I did have with this book was that towards the end there was like a little bit of romantic suspense element to it. I felt kind of random. It felt like they just kind of threw it in there just to like spice things up a bit make it a little bit more interesting. So I had to take off a star and then also I think a lot of people will complain too as well but this book is like over 550 pages I think. It's close to 600 pages so some people might complain that it's just a little bit too long. I do agree that there are a lot more extra scenes it's not like the extra scenes are boring but it was just like it didn't really do anything to propel the plot so I can see it not being like the perfect book that everybody would want but regardless I still really liked this book I really liked um, our author and I think I just found a new author that I'm definitely going to keep my tabs on so I gave this one a four out of five stars okay so the next book that I did read was The Summer Proposal by Vi Keelan now this one is a popular romance novel because Vi Keelan and Penelope Ward are two like dual authors that are just been dominating the indie romance space like when it first began so I haven't read a Vi Keelan novel in a year now um, Vi Keelan and I I have like a love-hate relationship because sometimes like her books are really good it hits the mark the pacing is great but most of the times I find that the pacing is just a little bit off for me so the summer proposal follows our heroine who unfortunately has a dirtbag boyfriend her boyfriend is like scum and unfortunately we're dealing with a heroine who doesn't know that her boyfriend ate it so basically her boyfriend is like you know what for the summer I need some time for my Myself. I'm gonna be traveling to I think like Scotland and I'm going to have an open relationship I'm going to have fun explore find myself and be in relationships you can do the same and our hero is kind of like well I don't want to do that because I'm in love with you I want to stay committed to you please don't make me do this but he's just like no we've been together for too long we need to find ourselves again so she reluctantly like stays behind in the United States and it's in the summer and she meets our hero and she's like really attracted to her hero but she feels so guilty because she's thinking to herself that she wants to stay faithful in her relationship with her boyfriend who is currently having flings with other girls and so she's like no like and she's like pushing away our hero but then afterwards her best friend convinces her that it's just for the summer he's going to be leaving soon like you don't have to commit to anything now our hero is very charming he's very sweet he's also very good looking he is a hockey player he's famous and he does a lot of charitable work he helps out around the community and he is picture perfect so obviously we are rooting for our hero to be with our heroine so the thing is is that the pacing of this book was just not for me I think it just started off a little bit too slow with our heroine kind of constantly pushing him away and I just felt that that dragged on for a lot then I also felt that towards the end where everything was revealed into why our hero didn't want to commit to a relationship, why our hero broke things off suddenly, why our hero did this and did that was way too rushed and it wasn't flushed out enough for me to care enough 
to even like try to concentrate onto what's happening. I felt that the middle of the book definitely had a lull to it so that took away my enjoyment factor of it too as well but overall still a solid novel gave it three out of five stars. I would still recommend you to check this book out if you have nothing to read and for some reason it's on your kindle already and you're on the beach and you just want to kill time. So the next book that I did read is this really popular older indie romance. I think this was published in the early 2010s. So this one's called Seduction of Snacks by Tara Civic. And now I remember seeing this book and I was like, oh man, I really, really want to read it because it looks so interesting at that time. And then now I saw it again at my library and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna read it because it has over 50,000 reviews on Goodreads. Everybody really enjoys it so I wanted to see what the hype was about. So essentially this is a second chance romance. Our female heroine unfortunately had a one night stand that didn't end as well as she planned because she ended up getting pregnant and she had this like really instant spark and attraction and she had this really intensive and explosive chemistry with our hero but then she got so embarrassed because that was her first time ever you know having you know and so she was just so embarrassed so she just like ran away from it and then only to like not know our hero's identity at all get pregnant and then she like grows into this older woman who is taking care of a toddler who's also trying to run a very successful chocolate store with her best friend who's trying to run like a sex toy store so it's like chocolate and treats and it's there where she bumps into her one night stand again aka the father of her child and she is trying her best to kind of keep the son a secret but then you know they have that same explosive chemistry that they had once upon a time so they are drawn together like moths to a flame and they reignite their relationship and then all of a sudden the little boy runs into the picture and then our hero kind of knows that he has been a father and that she is the one person that he has been searching for this entire time. So this one I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars mostly because I did enjoy it and I like the second chance romance. I thought it was really cute between our two characters but the only problem that I have with it was the humor of it. I felt like it was very 2010-ish. I felt like it was really crude. All her jokes were related to sexual intercourse and I didn't find that funny. I didn't think it was witty. So it kind of got tiring and very annoying halfway through so that's why I had to give it an average rating. Okay so the next book that I did pick up is this one called Neanderthal Seeks Human by Penny Reed. This one is also another early 2000s intense popular romantic comedy novel that a lot of people are picking up nowadays and my friends really liked the series and I wanted to see what the hype was about because I did read a couple of Penny Reed books that I really enjoyed but then there were also some Penny Reed books that I thought were okay so this one I thought was okay too as well so our heroine's really smart and basically she knows a lot of quick facts she is just brilliant but the problem is is that she gets let go from her job that she's not being well loved or appreciated for and so she's kind of like down in the dumps by it but then miraculously there's someone that steps in and offers her a new job and this job perfectly aligns with her interests as well as her skill set and so she's kind of like on cloud nine with this one and especially since the person who stepped in is like the boss and he is really brilliant and he's really smart and he's extremely attractive and and most importantly he's attracted to her and so they kind of develop this like really slow burn relationship in the workplace and they get to know each other she's kind of like quirky in the sense that she doesn't realize that she is attractive and that she could be someone that our hero likes so overall I still like this book but it was just way too slow burn for me and when it becomes really slow burn it becomes kind of boring and I just wanted things to pick up a little bit I wanted more interesting things happening in the plot will I continue reading the series I don't think so not for now because each book is so thick and so long and Penny Reed's writing is good but then it's also long-winded sometimes so it slows down my reading even more. I gave this one a three out of five stars. So the next book that I did read is this one called Break Up With Him For Me by Whitney G. Now this one I really really did enjoy so 
At first it was kind of like iffy for me because it's a friends to lovers romance and I don't really like friends to lovers. I think friends to lovers is kind of boring in my opinion but this one was really good. So this one involves our heroine who is the younger sister of our hero's best friend. They had a enemies to lovers romance. They hated each other when they were children and they just didn't want to be anywhere near each other but then unfortunately for our hero and she kind of gets into herself into a lot of trouble and she needs bailout and then like the bailout is of course the older brother's best friend which is our hero and so she is trying to find a boyfriend in high school and in college and she can't find one because she just sucks at love and she always meets like the weirdest guys ever possible so somehow along the way she convinced her older brother's best friend to like coach her in relationships and then our hero is like reluctant at first but then our hero kind of sees that she is in this predicament where she's always finding herself in these like really weird dangerous situations sometimes so he like offers his expertise basically and so they've developed this friendship over the years and they became best best friends and so he's really attracted to her and he really likes her but he's also really scared that he's going to mess things up and ruin this friendship meanwhile our heroine is kind of oblivious to the fact that she is also in love with him because she's so concentrated on finding a man that isn't him so she met this really amazing guy and he's happy for her but then he's also sad because he knows that he's going to lose her at one point and then so this is like the story of our hero kind of like pulling his head out of his butt and trying to win our heroine over and trying to convince her that he is the right person for him and overall I really liked it. I thought it was like super cute in a lot of areas. I thought it was really painful to see our hero kind of deal with his own emotions and yearn for our heroine. But the one problem that I did have with this book was towards like the end where everything was kind of revealed and it was kind of rushed and I felt like the pacing was off. So I ended up giving this one a 4 out of 5 stars but it definitely is one of my new fave books so definitely go check it out. Okay so the last book that I did read is by a Thread by Lucy Score. So once again, I went on my Lucy Score kick and I read her like second latest novel. This one has 30,000 ratings on Goodreads. So it's pretty popular too as well. And I think it's climbing up the charts because of things we never got over. So By a Thread is one of my favorite romances because it is following the trope that I really like a lot. It's the grumpy boss trope. So our heroine is extremely sassy. She works as a waitress for this like pizza shop and she does not let anybody sass her including the customers and unfortunately for her she gets fired because our hero is making complaints and then she is out of a job and she thinks it's so unfair but then she's also okay with it because she totally hates our hero and she thinks that our hero is an arrogant butthole and then she gets stopped by a really classy woman and the classy woman tells her that you know what I got you a job don't worry about it and she ends up working in this very big corporation as I think an assistant and then that's when she realizes that it was our hero's mother who hired her to work as an assistant to him so now they are both tangled up into this like weird relationship mess that his mom concocted and it's like an office enemies to lovers romance our heroine is so strong she stands up for herself she gives her you know quick witty lines that puts him in his place and he is very alpha in a sense and he wants to dominate her he wants to like make sure that she knows that he is attracted to her but he's not going to do anything about it because he doesn't like that behavior and he thinks that if he does condone that type of behavior he's going to turn into his father so he tries to at one point convince her for her to quit her job so they could pursue something and she like immediately shut it down she's like you're a joke because i'm not gonna put my career on the line for you and like why would she even give something 
as good as her job up for like this flank so it was really interesting to see obviously our hero is so sweet he has his own like little father issues that he needs to deal with and he needs to get over and then meanwhile our heroine has her own father issues that are a little bit sadder that she has to take care of overall our heroine is a sweetheart and she is an angel and she is well loved by everybody in her life because she is like that you know really helpful s sweet person and then meanwhile our hero is looked as to be a very cold and you know uncaring person but in reality he is not so overall i really like this book i gave it a four and a half out of five stars it wasn't a perfect five out of five and the reason why i gave it four and a half was because the last like third act breakup scene was just too dramatic for me and i felt that it was like unnecessary and i felt that it was like not properly flushed out it just wasn't like you know something that i wanted but overall, I still really enjoyed this book and I really recommend you to read this book. And if you want, maybe read Buy a Thread first before things we never got over if you like this Office Enemies to Lovers trope more. But anyways, that is it for all the romantic comedy books that I did read this week. Hopefully you guys like this video and I'll see you guys again next time in a new one. Bye! <laughs>